Hi guys, welcome back to our case of econ struggles. Welcome to another AP micro struggle. Today I'm talking about topic 6.3, which is the difference between public and private goods. It's going to be a really quick video, but hopefully will be helpful. So here's what you need to know. For each good, we can sort of classify it along two lines. And these are going to be two different lines that I've talked about earlier. This is not the same as like normal versus inferior or ordinary versus Giffen. This is about non-rival and non-excludable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define these and then we're going to look at these different items and sort of classify them according to these two criteria. So non-rival means that does Bill's consumption affect others' ability to consume it? And non-excludable means can Bill prevent others from using it? So let's just go through each of these goods and sort of put a check mark or a star by it if it's non-rival. So what you can see right off the bat is the house is indeed non-rival. If you live with a family, one person's ability to live in the house doesn't generally affect someone else's ability to live in the house. Only one person can use the phone at a time. The lake is non-rival because Bill sitting at the lake does not impact others' ability to sort of also sit in the lake and look at the fish. Same with the park. My ability to go to the park and walk around the park does not generally impact what other people are able to do in terms of being at the park. And so that's sort of how I would define these goods. Now, if we're going to talk about non-excludable, again, maybe we'll put a check in this dark blue color. That's basically saying, can Bill prevent others from using it? So the house, yes. Bill can definitely prevent other people from being in this house. Same with the phone. This is sort of like a satellite radio or satellite TV. So that also gets a check, not because Bill can prevent others from using it, but because the company can prevent others from using it. The lake, again, Bill cannot prevent others from using it. Same with the park. I almost forgot the fish. The fish is definitely rival because if I take one fish out of the lake, no one else can take a fish out of the lake, but I cannot prevent someone else from going and fishing in the lake. So now let's just clarify these into sort of four categories. So here are the four categories. If you're both non-excludable and non-rival, then you are a public good. An example of this public good is like the park that we just talked about or the lake. If it's not excludable, but it is rival, this is like the fish, because if I take the fish out, then someone else can't take that fish out. Unsurprisingly, there's a whole problem about this called the tragedy of the commons, where people tend to use too much of a common resource. If it is excludable, but non-rival, this is like satellite TV or satellite radio. It's called a club good or a low congestion good, or like something you have to subscribe for. And if it's non-excludable and non-rival, like your house, it's going to be a private good or your phone. So again, very basic, just the basic idea here is that public goods tend to be underfunded. It's hard to get people to pay for something that's non-excludable and non-rival. And common goods or commons tend to be overutilized. That's what we call the tragedy of the commons. Private goods are everything we've talked about before. And club goods are sort of like this subscription satellite TV, satellite radio sort of deal. So if this was helpful, if this sort of helped you learn these four types of goods, make sure to like and subscribe. If you still got questions or confusion, comment below. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.